here in Ohatchee, Alabama with a very special athlete. And when I say special, I really mean that. One of the best pure athletes we've ever featured on Average Joe's, Air Jorda Crook, is in the house with us. A UAB commit in volleyball, but obviously we're sitting here because of she was the chosen player of the year in basketball in the 3A in the state of Alabama. Miss Jorda, how have you been, first of all? Um, I've been good, been busy. You know, stuff kind of slowed down after basketball, though. Well, let me ask you a question, um, and I've heard this from countless people that know you and is in and around the Ohatchee uh -huh. program. They said you do basketball just as a hobby, just something to do, but your actually really main focus is volleyball. Yeah. Well, talk about that. What at what point in your life or your career was you like, hey, you know, I'm I'm really more into this, talking about the volleyball aspect of it. I started playing volleyball in seventh grade and once I started I knew I was like, Yeah, basketball got my thing anymore. I actually wanna be good at that. And my sisters played volleyball in college, so I kinda had something to like live up to. And I feel like it was just something that could have been, like, in me. What did you learn from your sisters that went ahead of you and, and played? I'm sure they obviously gave you some tips and things like that, but seeing them go through, uh, maybe the recruiting process, seeing them go through the st struggles and, and things like that of college, what have you learned from them? I was really young when my sisters were in college, so I really don't remember anything from them playing. I just remember, like, playing at their games and stuff, but... I mean, my sister, Jessica, she helped me through, like, all my recruiting process stuff. She, every step of the way, she was there helping me sign with UAB. She was here. All my siblings were here. I, I mean, they're just good people. Now, let me rewind the clock. And, you know, you mentioned when you were a little kid playing, things like that. Uh, what was life like you growing up? I'm sure you probably picked up sports at an early age. Obviously, you just have an athletic family like you did, but... What was that like growing up right here? And you grew up here in Ohatchee, correct? Mm -hmm. What was that like? I really didn't start like playing sports till like second or third grade. I grew up on a farm, so I was like really into like horses and stuff. But my dad was my coach for basketball, so it was probably part of the reason why I don't like basketball anymore. He was hard on me. He knew how good I could be. But I mean, I had a lot to live up to seeing like all the awards in my. We have an award room for all my siblings' accomplishments, so I had a lot to live up to just walking through that. Oh, yeah. It's like a Hall of Fame, huh? Yeah. So you say your dad was hard on you, and that's kind of what burnt you out on basketball. Well, let me ask you this, though. You, you grew up on a farm. Obviously, that's discipline in that all in itself. Mm -hmm. Things you got to do. You can't just go lay around on the couch. You got work to do. Then having your dad as a coach, uh, you feel like that structure now is paying off now that you're going to be a college scholarship athlete? I mean, for my siblings, it was more of like them doing work and they bring it up to me all the time that how I had it easy because all I did was like play and just have fun. But I mean, I think it helped me in the long run because I wasn't always inside. I was always doing something, always playing. And I guess it's always a competition. Like everything we do, my siblings were always doing something like competitive. So that's good though. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. Now let's fast forward to when you got into high school. You were actually playing varsity sports when you were still in middle school, correct? Mm -hmm. What was that like? Was there a phase when you was like kind of nervous or maybe a little bit intimidated by some of these girls and before it, you know, you became the big dog on, on campus, so to speak? Okay, in seventh grade, they tried to get me to move up on varsity for basketball. Coach Game did. And I told him no. And he called my mom. <laughs> yeah. So I went home and I cried and I didn't, I got out of that one. But eighth grade, he ain't even let me play junior high. He made me try out for varsity. Um, volleyball, I think I played junior high in my seventh, seventh grade year, eighth grade year. Moved up, ninth grade started on varsity. And then it's just been up from there. So when we do anything Ohatchee related, this is one of the best family environment schools that I've ever seen. And, and you know, we cover schools from Mobile to the Tennessee border. Um, for those who've never maybe been out here to a game and had or seen you guys play, talk about this atmosphere out here, how you got, I mean, you, you guys out here really, a lot of schools say we got culture and we're family. You guys live it. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, team-wise, I think we're like really a family. Like we think of each other as family. Coach Ginn treats us like family. Um, we treat him like family. We treat his kids like family. Uh, for like fan base-wise, I feel like 
we love to see you win and just the support is there for everybody in all sports no matter academic band anything like that i feel like it's just everybody in ohatchee is that small community everybody knows everybody so i feel like they just rather see you win and support you than not be there for you that's right i've noticed like you said any sport male or female sport I, i've noticed the sports there and I, what I really like about Ohatchee fans is, I should say this off the record, they get a little rowdy. They really, they really get after it. If people who's never been to the Creek Bank on a Friday night for a football game, that's yeah. one of the best examples. Uh, but, Jordan, let's, let's fast forward back to this year. Uh, you did something that's pretty incredible. You crossed over the 3,000-point mark, right? Uh, but you also crossed over the 2,000-point mark all in the same season. Uh, that lets everybody know what kind of clip you were scoring at the top ten in the nation. It's unbelievable. Uh, when this basketball season started, you've always been very good, but it seemed like you just went to this other level. Can you talk about this season in general? Uh, was your mindset different or something when you was like, this is my last time, let me go ahead and do this, or what was it? I mean, I, I didn't plan to pick up a basketball after this year. I don't plan on picking another one up. And I feel like I just wanted to live, leave a legacy on Ohatchee. And like my brother and my sisters, they both left their legacy. Like everywhere I go, I'll hear about them. And you know, my dad, he's always told me I can be great if I just use the talent that God's given me. And I feel like I had to live up to the expectations for me. And it, everybody's like, you had a good game, you had a good game. I feel like I'm supposed to do that at this point. So to like surpass 3,000 points is great and all, but it it wasn't like a surprise for me because I knew I could do that. I knew I could score all these points. I knew I could be good at basketball. It was such a, a unique tournament in Jacksonville. Um, a lot of these members of the media that I know are from different parts of the state. <laughs> they were like, well, we, it, it, they were like asking me like he was a like some kind of mythical player or something. It's like, is all this stuff real? And you know, because they'd seen Plainview all this year. You know, we seen them in this tournament. They played them get transy and all this. And I said, uh, I told them, I said, she may score fifty or sixty. And they was like, what? And I said, I mean, it could happen. I'm just telling you. And I said, she may have to to beat them. I said, it's going to be it's going to be one of them situations. And then uh, I remember at halftime of that game, I had about five different media members walk up to me and that's like Jesus what's going on out here because they ain't never seen that like it mm-hmm. and I told them my dad's like why where's she going she got to be going out in or Auburn I was like now nah, she's going to play volleyball and they were like what they were all just shocked they were like they couldn't believe it I'm talking about media members all the way from the Tennessee border who come down some from across the state you know and I and they were just in shock and uh but that's a testament to to your athletic ability uh but Rewinding the clock back to, to Jacksonville in that final game. I know you guys were upset uh, in, the, in the locker room. I did the post-game interviews with you guys. But to me, I felt like you had kind of a, a relief in a way. You, you, I know you were upset, but I could just tell you were like, okay. It's like you got it all out of your system or something. Uh, I was like focused on two sports at that time. Like I just got back from a volleyball tournament, two-day weekend volleyball tournament in Gatlinburg, and it took like a toll on my body for that like, I was hurting a little bit but I tried not to show it you know um, it was a relief for me like the feeling of not having to pick up another basketball if I don't want to um, just focusing on volleyball for a while I just I just feel like it it was a whole lot lifted off of me I, I could see it in the interview I really got sitting in there I was like I know you was upset for your teammates, obviously. They're like your sisters. and, and uh, But, man, I could just tell on your face. You was like, okay. I mean, I was sad <laughs> that I'm not going to play with them ever again. But, I mean, it's just – I knew we could go so far. I wanted it for us, but it was just a lot. Now, let, let me ask you a question because this is a, a different type of question that I've asked even all the other player of the years that are seniors. Now you know where you're going. Now you know uh, what you're doing. You're playing volleyball. You're going to the UAB. Uh, what's Jordan's main focus from now to the time you said you arrive in week two in June? Is that correct? Mm-hmm. What's your main focus to get yourself not only mentally but physically ready 
to go to that next level? Mentally, I think, I think I'm there physically. I can work on a whole bunch, getting stronger. I just want to work on school and volleyball when I get there. I'm not worried about too much other than that. I ain't no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, preparation-wise, you've already you're doing your own workouts and things like that. Are you playing in any travel teams or anything like that leading up to this? Uh, like I said, I play with champions. Um, we do do a few tournaments. We haven't been playing in huge tournaments lately, but after that plain view, before that plain view game, we played in a decent, decently big tournament. But we actually have regionals this week. That's good. Well, um, I know you're at school today, and I'm sure you want to get back in the classroom and get busy. <laughs> I'm just joking with you. But uh, before we shut this interview down, it's another thing I do with all the Player of the Years. What would you like to say to all those fans and family and coaches and these people just supported you, been on this ride with you? What would you like to say to them at this time? Um, I'd like to say thank you to the people who supported me. I didn't always receive a lot of nice things to say from everybody, you know. Being like actually good at something it gives you a lot of hate you know i feel like everybody wanted me to hand them a win i'm not going to do that i'm not the type of person to i like i don't want to lose if there's something i can do to win a game i'm going to do it um but i do want to say thank you to everybody who supported me thank you my teammates for all the love thank you to coach ken thank you my family hey we appreciate you having uh time out of your day uh especially how much you love being in the classroom to, to sit down and speak with us. Jordan, best of luck at the next level. We know you're going to kill it over there as well. Thank you. Thank you so much.